Hi, it's your boy Nine Spiral, Fair Use, YouTube Fair Use. This is called Fair Use and it's allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under Title 17 USC 107. Alright, let's pop off. Let's cook. Let's cook. Uh, I'm going to title this video, uh, Honor Thy Father and Thy Mother Above, Part 2, right? And so we're digging on uh, the creator gods, right? We're digging on this male and female dual god form, right? Ometi Chuchli and Omechi Iwatu. Better known as Ometiatu was an Aztec creation power who fathered four of the pantheon's most venerated gods, including Quetzalcoatl. Okay, so we got four creator gods. So mother and father actually spoke them into existence. And then when they spoke other words, other vibrations, these four creator gods started to create. So they are the elements. Um, you know, uh, the precious metals of the earth. Right? Or, 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 if you will, earth, wind, fire, ether. Right? And we talk about the four windows, right? The four corners of the earth. And the four seraphim holding up the throne of Hawa. So you see where we're going with it? But nonetheless... They've been they've been hiding your mother above. And we a drop nation. We don't like that. And so we're just digging on this link. We're just surfing the wave. Probably get into subscription. The gods that made up Ometiatu were Ometichuchli and Ometu Atil. Literally to Lord and to Lady. And Aztec resource uh sources, Shlaki. The binary gods were referred to as well, there you go. Name held the same meaning as her husband, your mother above, and your father above, her husband. So you see how serious this is. Because Proverbs say. When the most high come back. If you ain't. In the right vibration. If you ain't KTC. If you ain't about the law. Torah. Then she gonna mock at your calamity. It's right there in Proverbs. Let's rock. Alright, we're on my Instagram page. And um hala hawa man for um uh, uh, having me uh to post this to uh my IG uh a few times because you cannot find the link to this video. Um 
my guy right here is nowhere uh, to be found. Um, I mean, you just simply can't find it nowhere. And so we're in Los Lunes, New Mexico. We're digging on the Decalogue stone. Let's go. Let's pop off. Let's rock. Let's cook. Let's cook. All right. So I'm going to bring in the homie, the Ock Care Meal. And uh, I'm going to bring in the homie, the Ock Con Drop. Right? And, uh, you know what I'm saying? It helped me convey this message of how important it is to include our mom. Right? Honor thy father and thy mother above. Cure me. Yo, papa, papa, son. So we're in this chapter. Um, again, we're in the book, The Ten Tribes of Israel, historically identified with the aborigines of the Western Hemisphere. And this is historical records. It says, we are naturally disposed to inquire what was the Teo Moxtli, the name of the divine book, which contained the history, mythology, calendar, and laws of the Tultecas. This word is compounded of teo, divine, amitli, papyrus, and moxtli, or moxtli. For in the Mexican language, Y and X frequently supply the place of S. Tli is devoid of meaning, but in general termination, moxtli then appears to be Moses. All right, when the sentence would be the divine book of Moses, it is necessary to observe that in the Mexican language, the compounding of words terminating in itil with other words or elision of those final letters frequently takes place, as in the word occult, which is compounded of alt, water, and kali, a house. A little historical book was found of an Hebrew Indian nation. All right, this is a quote from somebody, which may probably be that of Bin mentioned by Nunez de la Vega, to which tradition it should be observed the Bishop of Chapa lent his much higher authority, it is impossible not to remark the resemblance which many of their proper names bear to the Hebrew. In the last edition of Garcia's Origen, Los Indios, we find the cause which follows inserted by the editor in the text, but Garcia notices himself other Indian names which resemble Hebrew. Epopovu, the sacred book of the ancient Kishe Maya. Before we get into the translation, it says that in uh, they found something about uh, amongst the uh, Indians of Nicaragua. It says Oviedo and Gomara, on their part, give an account of the books of the Indians of Nicaragua. They have, says Gomara, books of paper and parchment, a hand in width and twelve hands in length, folded like bellows, on both sides of which they make known in blue, purple, and other colors the memorable events which take place. Bernal Diaz del Castillo, who wrote in his Verdadera Historia de la Conquista de la Nueva España in Guatemala, says that the Indians of Mexico had booklets of paper made of the bark of a tree, which they called amate, and in them made their signs of, yeah, of the times and of past events. Some of these books were still in existence at the end of the 17th century in the territory which is now the Republic of Guatemala. Father Francisco Jimenez tells that in the province of Petén to the south of Yucatan, the Spaniards during their expedition of 1696 against the Itza found some books written with characters which resembled Hebrew characters and also those used by the Chinese. All right, so Father Francisco Jimenez. Doubtless, they were books written in Mayan hieroglyphs, all right, but they were Mayan, but they resembled Hebrew characters and Chinese because this is the source. You doggone right, it's the source. Con, con. I'm telling y'all, man, Rockwood Drop Nation, huh? Surf the wave, man. Rockwood Drop Nation, man, we got you. We ain't gonna leave you hanging. 
We cover every number on the board. South America. Hebrew and Chinese letters, huh? Cathay. La China, huh? Where you at, huh? This Florida right here. We got Preston John rocking here. Four corners, huh? Magellan. What a source said, huh? Amaru Khan is Asia. Is the superior India, right? Let's go. All right, we're back with Khan Kurmio. And uh, Khan is going to tie in. Um, uh, he's going to tie in uh, the Atlantis. Um, he's going to tie in Genesis, and he's also also going to tie in uh, the ancient Mayan Quiche record, right? Who we know them to be bona fide Israelites, right? Bona fide Israelites. I mean, nobody can refute um, what we're saying. No one can. Y'all ready to pop off? Let's go. All right, so we're in uh, chapter six mm -hmm. of this book, Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. Mm -hmm. It says here, Genesis contains a history of Atlantis slash America, right? The Hebrews are a branch of the great family of which the powerful commercial race, the Phoenicians, who were the merchants of the world 1,500 years before the time of Christ were apart. So Phoenicians are part of Hebrews. So when they talking about Phoenicians brought Paleo Hebrew over, they're just speaking the language of the Hebrews because they're a part of that. All right. But this was. All right. So uh, Paleo Hebrew is the most ancient language, right? It is Paleo Picto. It is pictograph, and if you look at the ancient Mayans, their hieroglyphs, it is pictograph. The same that you get uh, with uh, Mizraim hieroglyphs, right? Egypt is non exempt. So we're talking the most ancient language in which we find our father and our mother. Above. Spoken here. Mm -hmm. All right, in Atlantis slash America, Amaru Khan, the true old world. The Hebrews carried out from the common storehouse of their race a mass of traditions, many of which have come down to us in that oldest and most venerable of human compositions, the book of Genesis. I have shown that the story of the deluge plainly refers to the destruction of Atlantis and that it agrees in many important particulars with the account given by Plato. So Ignatius Donnelly is letting you know that he, you know, he's confident that, you know, the so-called flood is the same story as Atlantis, the destruction of Atlantis. You know, he said he's proven it. I mean, you got to read his book. It's very good, very scholarly, all the sources he uses, all right? The people destroyed were, in both instances, the ancient race that had created civilization. They had formerly been a happy and sinless condition. They had become great and wicked. They were destroyed for their sins. They were destroyed by water. But we can go farther. And it can be asserted that there is a scarcely a prominent fact in the opening chapters of the book of Genesis that cannot be duplicated from the legends of the American nations and scarcely a custom known to the Jews that does not find its counterpart among the people of the new world. All right. So there's counterparts to the whole story in Genesis. He's letting you know. That's what he's letting you know. Even in the history of the creation, we find the similarities. The Bible tells us, Genesis 1, 2, that in the beginning the earth was without form and void and covered with water. In the Quiche legends, we are told, Quiche Maya, the Quiche legends, we are told, at first all was seen, no man, animal, bird, or green herb. There was nothing to be seen. 
but the sea and the heavens. So part one of chapter one of the now the cliche records of translations. And it says that this is the account of how all was in suspense, all calm and silence, all motionless, still, and the expanse of the sky was empty. All right, Genesis. So again, and the earth was without form and void, empty, void, empty, without form. This is the first account of the first narrative. There was neither man nor animal, birds, fishes, crabs, trees, stones, caves, ravens, grasses, nor forests. It was only the sky. The surface of the earth had not appeared. It was only the calm sea, calm sea, and the great expanse of the sky. There was nothing brought together, nothing which could make noise, nor anything which might move or tremble or could make noise in the sky. There was nothing standing, only the calm water, only what? Waters. The placid sea alone and tranquil, nothing existed. There was only immobility and silence in the darkness in the night. All right? So again, earth was without form and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The what? The deep what? Waters. Right? Again, they move upon the face of the what? Waters. All right. We're going to pop off some forbidden scripture. Isaiah 48, verse... 16 and 17 come near to me hear this I have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was I was there and now the most high Hawa and his Ruach his spirit his wife so Venus to Texas, a.k.a. Solomon the Builder, said, For I think that the soul exists as what? Wife. The inhale is a feminine. <gasps> and you push that wild, subtle but forceful. It is the masculine. Wow. All right. And now the Most High Hawaii and His Spirit has sent me. Thus says the Most High, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am your power. Who teaches you to profit. And they don't always mean monetary gain. Who leads you by the way you should go. Hmm? And then we said there was light. And there was light. And God saw the light. And it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. It was dark, right? Again, there was only immobility and silence in the darkness. Darkness. All right. And God saw light and there was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And the earth was without form and void in darkness. Darkness. Only the creator, the maker, Tepu, Kukumats, and four fathers were in the water surrounded with light. Where what? In the lights around there with light. Right, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. That it was good. All right. All right. We're going to pop off with my good arc con drop. Drop. Let's go. Pop off, son. Wow. Wow. Here we shall gather the manifestations, the declarations, the account of the sowing. And the dawning by the framer. And the shape. Come on, come on. She who has born children. He who has begotten sons as they are called, along with Hanapu Possum and Hanapu Coyote, Great White Bakari, Koti, Sovereign, and Ketsu. Now, Watu. Serpent or dragon. That's what we're talking. 
heart of lake and heart of sea. Wow. Creator of the green earth, Mama Earth, and creator of the blue sky. With my right hand, I beat it out. Rakwa, I beat out. I met out the firmament, right? Awa. So, Monaga, we have a framer and the shaper. And we don't have a serpent because we know that there's a difference between the serpent and the dragon. You talking snake? Or are you talking dragon? See, in alchemy, right, when you study energy, frequency, vibration, as we've gotten, man, as my, as my wave surfers know, we talk the alchemical dragon, an alchemical serpent. The serpent is one thing, right? They say he represents the impersonal nature of the unconscious, unconscious, as it bursts into consciousness. Reminds me of artificial intelligence, you know. But let go. That's the serpent. And then you got the what? The owl chemical dragon. Yeah. So the serpent can't be the dragon if there's a serpent and a dragon in alchemy. So when they keep saying serpent, you don't know if they're talking a snake or a dragon or neither of the above. Maybe they're just talking about the impersonal nature of the unconscious. Maybe they're just talking about um, something that brings everything to life, but also kills everything. Yeah, that's the serpent, my nigga. <laughs> that's the serpent, right? But what's the what's the dragon, right? Alchemical dragon represents the philosophical quicksilver. That that just means they have no idea. And they're going to tell you right here, unlike ordinary Mercury, again, which means they have no idea because everything they're based the cosmos off is ordinary Mercury. But you're talking about something beyond what, what Thoth can see, what Mercury can see. You're talking about something they're calling the mysterious substance of unknown origin. So the Naga is unknown. The dragon is unknown. All they know is that life, man, it gives us life, right? The living spirit can be extracted from this dragon. Life, right? So let's get back to our framer and shaper. We're just talking life. What they call serpent. We're not talking about killing everything. We're not talking about just bursting into consciousness. We're talking about the creator energy, which is what? Life. They say the spirit, right? In alchemy. It is the vessel in which the spirit is contained. <laughs> Keep it 
Bag, Daniel. The light cannot be found in other countries. In like manner, they sing on other religious occasions and at their feast of love, Al Aleyo, Aleyo, which is the divine name by his attribute of omnipotence and alluding to, and I believe that's Hawa. They sing likewise, Hewa, Hewa, like I just said, right? Hawa. Wow. Wow. Get it from here, man. Hawa, God, creator, is the key to a host of linguistic forms, while El, a common Shemitic word for God, is well remembered in the Bible. Hawa, the ancient name for the creator, is not. The reason is simple. When the Israelites were given Yahweh, right? So now they're throwing a Yahweh, but were they ever given Yahweh? He just said, he just said, <laughs> it is easily identified form of Hebrew verb. It is the most ancient name. So what name were they given? Yahweh. See, you got to dodge the hijack because they want to give you a new name. Now, who who, who needs a new name, Anagi? Moses don't get it. No one else has a new name. Why would they have to call Hawa a new name? They learn.
learn to forget the old Hawa. So is that a good thing that they get a new name and forget the old Hawa? And Hawa is everywhere. Everywhere. Hawa is everywhere. Hawa. Hawaii. Hawa is everywhere, my nigga. Everywhere, you know, in your indigenous. Yo, Washington, Washita, Teotihuacan. Uh, I'm in Georgia, so uh, the Hiawasi River, <laughs> you know, the uh, uh, Dragon Canoe and them, the Chickamauga, uh, travel down to separate, right? Let's go. Alright, let's find I'm out above in scripture. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 1 through 3. Thus says the Most High Where is the certificate of your mother's divorce, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you, Israel? For your inequities, you have sold yourself. And for your transgressions, your mother has been put away. Why, when I came, was there no man? Why, when I called, there was none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that I cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Indeed, with my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stink because there is no water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens, the Shamaim, with blackness. And I make a sackcloth their covering. Hmm? Ama. Second Nezus chapter 2. Verse 1 through 7. Thus says the Most High, I brought this people out of bondage, and I gave them commandments through their servants, the prophets, but they would not listen to them and made my counsels void. The mother who bores them says to them, Your mother above is talking to you, Israel. Go, my children, because I am a widow and forsaken. I also brought you up with gladness. But with mourning and sorrow, I have lost you because you have sinned for the Most High, Hawah, and have done what is evil in my sight. But now, what can I do for you? For I am a widow and forsaken. Go, my children. 
Ask for mercy from the Most High. Now I call upon you, Father. Do you see the relationship? Now I call upon you, Father. As a witness in addition to the mother of the children. Hmm? Because they would not keep my covenant also. She says my covenant too. So that you may bring confusion on them and bring their mother to ruin. So that they may have no offspring. Let them be scattered among the nations. Let their names be blotted out from the earth because they have despised my covenant also. Do you see our ancient love song? Lahua. Today we're going to be talking about the letter Chet. It is the eighth letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And this is the eighth part of our Revealing the Hebrew Letters series. Now the letter Chet is represented by the number eight in Hebrew gematria. And the number eight means life, new life, new beginnings. And so the Chet is a picture of a Vav and a Zion, which we just talked about, the Vav and the Zion, the last two letters. But these two letters are connected by what's called a yoke. Now, if you remember correctly, the Vav, we said, was the number six, and it represented a man. And then the Zion was the number seven, and it was a Vav with a crown on its head, and it's said to be represented as a woman or a queen. And so we have a man and a woman yoked together. Two men说，我没有解释这种现象，但它可能是一个马蹄形的不明飞行物，因为过去拍摄过类似的马蹄形不明飞行物。啊，我在一个小时后又在天空的另一个角落看到了它。有趣的是，除了奇怪的闪电